Hey everybody, today for y'all I'm going to be doing this look here. This is a Maleficent inspired makeup tutorial. Um, I am so stoked for the movie, not the Sleeping Beauty old animated one, but the um, Maleficent movie that's coming out here I think in March. I love Sleeping Beauty in the first place, like that's one of my favorite fairy tales of all time. And uh, Angelina Jolie looks totally totally amazing in all of the promo pictures and in the trailers and it just looks like it's going to be a very intense movie. So I knew as soon as I saw the makeup, I was actually in the movie theater and I, when I was watching the trailer, and um, I knew as soon as I saw that makeup that I was going to have to do some type of a tutorial or a recreation of the look. So this is the look that I came up with. It's a very um, inspired kind of look. I was researching promo pictures, found one photo into, in particular that I decided to use as my inspiration and then this is the look that I came up with. So. Um, it's very defined by the insane kind of contouring that we have going on. A little bit of like the purple eyeshadows, smoky black liner, very bold brows, and then of course the red lips. This is by no means like an everyday makeup tutorial. But this is something where I think the eye look itself would be really pretty for like a prom or something like that coming up here soon. Um, this look would be really pretty and a lot more wearable if you uh, maybe didn't go so extreme on the contouring. You added some blush, not so bold on the brows maybe, uh, but of course I love bold And then brows. maybe not the red lips since that red and purple pairing is quite... Uh, intense you could maybe instead go for like a nude lip I think would look really pretty for this if you're wanting to use it for like a prom or some type of a look so I also want to say that this isn't me like totally recreating the look from head to toe I'm not trying to look like Maleficent it's an inspired look something where I kind of looked at the eye and sort of thought you know what are they doing there and then how can I make this kind of a very like beautifying type of a makeup so this is a look that I came up with I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get on to the tutorial okay so as you can see I have one eye here already completed just to save time and now I'm going to move on to the other eye. I've already primed my eyelid and I use the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion today. I'm going to start by going into my Bare Minerals palette that I have here. This is called The Finer Things and I'm going to use the eyeshadow called First Class. And this is sort of like a um, silvery gray greenish kind of a color. It's very uh, unique and I think that if you don't have this palette um, Max Vex would be kind of a good alternative and uh, just anything that sort of has like that um, silver but sort of like that green undertone to it. And I've actually just taken this on my ring finger and I'm going to be patting this all over my eyelid. I find that this shadow um, really shows up a lot more true and really has that kind of like a green tint to it when you apply it with your finger versus with a brush. So, so you really just want to get that color up on your lid up until the crease and then what we're going to do is we're going to start working on those really really kind of like pretty purpley shades that we have going on and for that I'm going to be using some MAC eyeshadows. I'm going to start by using the shade called Beautiful Iris which is one of my favorite shades of all time. This is a beautiful kind of um, icy lavender color. I'm going to be using my Revlon crease brush with this. This is actually the only brush that we're going to be using other than like a small little brush to go underneath our lower lash line. So this look is very simple and easy to achieve and so I just put some of that shadow on there and I'm just going to go in here and start to apply this to my crease and you kind of want to get um, a little bit of like a wing shape going on so as you start to blend the eyeshadow out kind of pull it up and out here on like the very um, outer part of your eyelid almost like you're creating like a little swooshy type of effect and basically you just want to continue to layer this shadow on until you have um, just a really nice light wash of lavender in your crease. Now we're going to go in here and we're going to define the eye a little bit more and get sort of that dark purple going on with uh, Max eyeshadow in Satellite Dreams. This is kind of like Beautiful Iris. It's a bit deeper. It has a lot more of like um, a warmer kind of reddish undertone to it. It's picking up like very blue on camera but you can kind of see when I tilt it. It's got like that very warm purpley tone. And to it. so taking that on the same exact brush I'm going to kind of follow that same motion that we were doing earlier and mainly concentrate this on like the very very hollow points of my eye. So I'm not going to take it up as far as I did with the beautiful iris shade. I'm just going to concentrate it right here in the crease and that initial uh, lay down of that uh, beautiful iris is really going to make this shade pop just a little bit more. You can see here that I deepened it up a little bit more because this is all kind of about, about like layering and getting that perfect very kind of like smoky purpley kind of eye. So I'm actually going to go in here now with a gray shadow and that's just going to help really kind of give as you can see on this eye um, that more kind of a cut crease appearance but it still remains kind of smoky you know it's not just like a definite crease there. So I'm going to be going into the um, 
Physicians Formula. This is the Canyon Classics Matte Eyeshadow Quad. You can use any matte gray for this. I mean, this is just a very, very basic matte gray. There's nothing really special about it. So I just put a little bit of that gray shadow on the very, very tip of this brush. I'm not, you know, with the purples, I was kind of swirling it all around the brush, but you really just want it on the very, very tip. That way you can get more of like a precise control map of the eyeshadow. And you're just going to kind of look straight and kind of just put this right where your crease is. and just trace this right along your crease there. So we're not blending this up into the purples. We're just wanting this to create a very kind of like shadowy look. Excuse my mirror here. And one of the main places that I'm really trying to concentrate this in is just, uh, you're not gonna be able to see that, um, is just like right here in the inner corner. Because the promo picture is very kind of smoky and it just looks like there's a little bit more darkness and depth right in here. And if you guys have noticed too, we're not putting like anything over here like on our outer V portion of our eyelid just because in the promo picture that space looked very um, open. It didn't really look like there's a lot of dark shadows there. So after that is done, it's now time for liner. Um, I kind of slightly winged out the eyeliner because again in the promo picture it looks like there's just a very very slight flick. It's not anything insane. There's a few different promo pictures that I've seen. There's some where her eyeliner goes like all the way in here to the inner corner and it's like a very um, it looks kind of very like Arabic almost, uh, but then in another promo picture, more of like the more recent ones, it's more of just like your traditional winged eyeliner, which is the route that I'm going for because if you are actually going to create this look for something, um, I think that this is a little bit more wearable. It's not as scary, but it still looks really pretty. So I'm just going to be going in here with the L'Oreal's the Super Slim Eyeliner. So then once you have your wing done, we're going to go in and tight line and apply some black liner to our waterline as well. I'm using my Jane um, water resistant eyeliner, which I love. With this eyeliner, you just want to make sure you get all the way to the very, very kind of inner corner of your eyelid because in the prone picture, she's definitely got a lot of like smokiness right on in there. And I almost forgot to go in and highlight my brow bone. I used, I went back into that, um, the Finer Things palette and used this white called Five Star. You can use any type of white eyeshadow that you want. There's, again, nothing special about this white. It's just a plain white. And we're going to apply this right underneath our brow bone. For this, it's really important that you just get a white. Don't go cream or beige or anything like that because um, it's going to look too warm tone. Now I'm going to go in here with some type of a matte black eyeshadow. I'm going to be using the one from my Lara Pro palette. A lot of these colors are very easily dupable, so I mean if you don't have these exact products, you don't need them. You know, matte white, a matte gray, matte black, some purples. They're very, very easy colors to replicate. So with this, I'm just going to take that smaller brush that I was talking about earlier and apply this right along my lower lash line. And I don't know, there's something about this step that I think really brings this entire look together. And with this, you're going to go all the way into the very, very inner corner, which normally I wouldn't recommend because it kind of closes off the eye, but it gives off that very feline effect. Right, now we're going to finish off with some mascara. Um, it, she's definitely wearing fake eyelashes, but I am not a fake eyelash person, like, in the slightest. I think I've done, like, a total of maybe two tutorials in which I've included fake eyelashes because they're just not my thing. So I'm just going to go in with, actually, a fiber mascara. This is the Voluminous False Lashes from L'Oreal. And we're just going to apply a few coats of this and kind of get more of, like, a dramatic lash effect. Effect. But if you're definitely wanting to go like all the way in, use some false eyelashes and it would be really, really pretty. Okay, so the eyes are now completed. I'm just going to go in now and start doing the face and I'll show you guys what I'm using. Alright, so I'm just going to start by using a very, very, very pale foundation because she's definitely like not tanned or bronzed like in any way whatsoever. So for this part, I just recommend taking whatever like the lightest color foundation you have is, so like your most wintry winter shade you can find. For me, that is this Revlon Color Stay Foundation in the shade Buff. I'm not a huge fan of this foundation for like a day-to-day -day base. This. Um, it kind of breaks me out and it's very very full coverage but I think that for this look it works very well so that's why I'm using it but of course you can use any type of foundation that you want I'm just giving this a nice shake also I'm using this because it's one of my like palest foundations so even though I don't really recommend this foundation um, I am using it. I'm using a foundation brush this is just like kind of a typical standard foundation brush and I'm using this because um, 
It's going to lay down the product in a way where it's going to give it lots of coverage. It's just going to make it look very kind of perfected. So now it's time for a concealer. I'm going to be going into my um, Benefit Confessions of a Concealaholic palette and using the Boing Concealer, which is up here at the top, and this is in the shade Light. I'm going to pat this right underneath my eyes. And then I'm going in here with the Revlon Nearly Naked Powder in the shade Fair, which is again one of my lightest powders just to set everything. And I'm going to be using the e.l.f. Complexion brush. He has um, very, very, very matte skin. It's important that also the products that you're using on your face are maybe a little bit more matte. And if they're not, just, you know, apply a bit more powder. All right, so once the face is perfected, full coverage and everything, we're going to go on to brows, which is a very, very important part of this look because her brows are... Ooh, that's my phone just rang. Anyway, as I was saying, her brows are a very, very important part of this look. They're just super, super pristine. So I'm going to be using the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade in the shade Dark Brown. And I'm also going to be using her number 12 brush. And the way that I like to do this is I take a little bit of the product onto the brush here, and then I will then take the cap and just kind of stipple the product onto the cap a little bit to remove any excess. And we're going to be taking this and just filling in our eyebrows. I think too you want to sort of try to arch your eyebrows as much as you possibly can. You can really see quite a big difference here. A bold brow is really, really important because it's just going to bring the whole look together. Okay, so the brows are done and if, like I said, they're very, very dramatic, very bold because that's just how she looks here in the promo picture. Um, her brows naturally are a little bit thinner and a lot more angled than mine. I just kind of worked with what I have here and I like the way this works. I think it fits well with my face shape. And I think it's important when you're doing that too, when you're doing like um, uh, recreation of looks and stuff and you're trying to um, mimic something. You have to make it work for your face shape still, otherwise it's going to look very off. So anyway, we're going to move on to the contouring so here. So for the contouring here, she really, I mean, she doesn't have any blush, any sort of color to her cheeks, and you could definitely tell that they use like a prosthetic something to give her like these insane cheeks. I'm looking at the promo picture here, and there's like a lot of like kind of like this circular indent here. So there's obviously some prosthetic usage and stuff, but we're going to just try to recreate um, that very, very contoured effect. So uh, if you have like the NYX, um, blush and taupe. Grab that. I'm going to be using the Gemma Kid eyeshadow here in the shade Vanity Fair. This is just a gray. You could use that gray eyeshadow that we used earlier. Um, whatever you like. And I'm going to be taking this on like a fluffy brush. And we're going to start, as you can see, it's very dramatic here. We're going to start buffing this right along our cheekbones. And you can see like how much that slims up the face. All right. So there's the initial one application. I'm going to go in again. Just contour it up a little bit more. And here it looks like her cheekbones are the main place for the contour. I'm going to contour just a little bit though here on like the um, inner part of my nose because it looks like she has something going on right in here. Just very lightly kind of get right in there. This makeup look is so much fun. It's very kind of like artsy and creative. So I'm having a lot of fun with this. And then, of course, she has her crazy headpiece on, which already, like, kind of contours her whole, like, forehead for her. So um, I don't have a crazy headpiece like that. But if you are recreating this look, I've seen tons of people that have, like, been able to make stuff like that. And there are other tutorials for that. And I'm just not a good, like, DIYer. So um, we're just going to keep it like this. And then, of course, finally, to wrap it all up, we have the Juicy Red I'm Lip. I'm going to be using this Clinique Chubby Stick Intense in the shade Mightiest Maraschino, I think is how you pronounce that. It's so number three and it's just kind of like the red color. And this is a little bit too strawberry for my liking so I'm going to go back in here with another color. I'm just going to use a little bit of Revlon's Red Velvet which you guys know is like my favorite red ever. So just a little bit of that on top just to give a little bit more of like a mmm a little bit more like a scarlet appearance. All right, and that is it. This is the completed look. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know it's a little bit different, a little bit kind of complicated in the sense that um, it's not like your average everyday makeup routine like whatsoever. I mean, we got the bold brows, we have that extreme contour, red lip, purple eyes. It's very out there, and I could see this being a look though that would be very, very fun. I know Halloween is like ages away, but something for that. Or um, like I said, if you're going to like a Disney themed party or something like that, or if you just have the occasion to dress up like Maleficent, um, I think that this look really kind of embodies um, what she is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found it somewhat... Uh, I don't know, the same as, like I said, the promo picture. I will have a link to the promo picture that I used for my inspiration. Link down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this look and if you might try out something like this sometime. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you guys all later. Bye-bye.